There's legitimately nine teams in the Eastern Conference who have bona fide playoff caliber talent, and despite what Steph Curry did to Boston in the NBA Finals, we still have to consider the Celtics to be at the very top of that list. But franchise owner Wilkiff Grousebeck doesn't feel that way, who was just quoted as saying, I loved being right there with them, it was thrilling. The other side of the coin is, I think that we've now been overrated. I think that performance was a bit overrated in the public mind, or my own mind. We were a finalist and two wins away from winning it, but when you look back, Brooklyn was a tough series, and then we had to go seven games against the Bucks and Heat, then we lost to Golden State. So we're not a hands-down team to repeat as Eastern Conference champions. I think we're a quality team." End quote. Newest free agent pickup Danilo Gallinari tearing his ACL was I'm sure a very rough pill to swallow for Celtic fans, but that doesn't mean the reigning East champions can't make another push towards ring number 18 in 2023. Considering turnovers were the biggest downfall for the Celtics throughout their entire 2022 playoff run, adding one of 20 active players with at least a 15 point per game average plus an assist to turnover ratio of over 2 in Malcolm Brogdon should keep things in check. So what's the biggest contribution from the 50-40-90 club member? And should Brad Stevens replace Gallo with Mello? Stay tuned for all that and much more. Right quick, just 11.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Also leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. And for NBA mixtapes, go follow at Hoops on Instagram. Thank you for any bit of support. Now into the content. We're just over a week away from the preseason, and I don't know about you, but I can't wait for the new NBA year to kick off. Quickly flashing back to last spring, even before the Celtics started their miraculous run through the Eastern Conference, despite the fact that I'm a diehard fan of Boston's division rival in the Toronto Raptors, the Seas became one of, and eventually, this channel's main team. As I did for the Raptors in 2019, the Lakers in 2020, and the Bucks in 2021, I predicted the Celtics would get through the conference several months before they did. Unlike those other three teams, Boston didn't end up winning the title, and since I called them a generational defense, which Stephen Curry and the Dubs ultimately exposed by taking three straight W's against to close out the finals, all summer, I've covered how Curry and the Dubs achieved what almost no one thought they could have. The likes of Andrew Wiggins, Draymond Green, and Gary Payton II made it extremely difficult on Boston's primary ball handlers in Marcus Smart, Jason Tatum, and Jalen Brown, turning those three players over a total of 62 times throughout six games. For perspective, just 34 turnovers combined were committed by the Warriors' top three players in turnovers in Curry, Wiggins, and Poole. However, it was a very good playoff run for Jason Tatum, where he posted 25.6 points, 6.7 boards, 6.2 dimes, 1.2 steals, and just under a block per night, over 24 2022 playoff games. The shoulder injury he suffered in the conference finals definitely slowed down Jason's value on both ends of the court, and in the next series, his shooting split against Golden State was at an unusual line of 36.7% from the field, 45.5% from three, and 65.5% from the foul line. Give credit to a top defender in Wiggins for holding Tatum to just 21.5 points per game in the finals. It was clear Jason was suffering through a bruised shoulder injury in the finals, but he was still having inconsistencies several rounds before that, and as we all know, come the postseason, there's no such thing as an inconsistent superstar. With that said, I'm looking forward to an MVP 2022-23 campaign from Jason and a playoff run where he stays healthy. Before breaking down Malcolm Brogdon, Jalen Brown deserves the spotlight for being the Celtics' leading scorer over six games against Golden State. Even if it didn't ultimately lead to the chip, Brown going back and forth with Draymond, playing hard-nosed defense on Klay Thompson, while posting an efficient 23.5 points per night on the biggest stage is something that isn't talked about nearly enough. Using his elite lateral quickness for his size, here he runs Clay off the three-point line, and as the give-and-go with Poole is executed, Brown stays on balance and well within range to mercilessly rotate back for the stuff. It's chase down blocks like that one, which bailed the Celtics out during their title run, seemingly on the regular. Additionally, Brown's relentless blitzes of the passing lanes constantly shift momentum for the Celtics as well. The one thing Jalen struggled with at times come the NBA Finals was his ball handling, 
but I don't think you can blame him too much for being sloppy with it on occasion, because Brown fulfilled his role as a primary scorer, and had to be creating off the bounce more than you'd want your shooting guard to. That's why Malcolm Brogdon's addition will be incredibly beneficial, as the former Rookie of the Year has steadily progressed into a perennial 19 plus point per game score. Unfortunately, he's missed 62 games over the last two seasons, so those numbers are somewhat inflated, but here's what you have to understand about Malcolm. Ever since this man entered the league back in 2016, he's always been a high volume yet highly efficient offensive player who's been one of the main options in the respective system on every team he's played on, whether it was being the primary point guard on multiple deep Milwaukee Buck playoff runs or most recently with the Pacers in Indiana. While Brogdon's playmaking relief should be massive, there's still a few concerns here. What kept Brogdon out last season was a right Achilles injury, a back injury, and a concussion, and in the games he did play for the Pacers, he shot a career-low 31.2% from beyond the arc. Regardless of whether or not he's efficient in Boston, you can expect Malcolm to make the Celtics 10 times more fun to watch than they were in 2022, based off all the attention he's going to draw with his underrated off-the-dribble scoring, plus speedy drive and kicks. Defensively, Malcolm's scrappy, but his 112.4 career rating on this end would have ranked just 13th best among point guards in 2022. Thankfully, the Celtics have some guy named Marcus Smart. Overall, it's Brogdon's ability to take up a big chunk of the ball handling responsibility. That'll make the Celtics' offense much more under control in the biggest moments, therefore making Boston far from overrated like their owner called them. Whether Brad Stevens decides to sign Carmelo Anthony or not, the Boston Celtics' depth is in good hands, with a potential sixth man of the year in Malcolm, and I could talk a lot more about the Celtics' depth in another video. Getting back to one of the top backcourt players in basketball, Jalen Brown, since I can't decide personally, I want to know your take on where Brown ranks among the best shooting guards in today's game. Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout, and the top 5 commenters by September 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Last video I asked, does Pat Bev help or hurt the Lakers? Today's shoutout goes to Kent Saludo, who says, I see a lot of ego clashing this next season for the Lakers. I always believe that chemistry is very important and talent itself can't win you rings. Beverly's skill set fit with the Lakers, but his attitude doesn't. Westbrook and Bev seems good now, but wait till the season starts and one of them gets disappointed. It'll all blow up. Braun is also getting disappointed with the results of the last two seasons, and I think he can't take a lot of the issues during this season. The Lakers need to make more moves, and I don't think Beverly will help them. It's just my opinion though, and we'll be happy if they can prove me wrong. You tell the story in Community Speaks, so leave your take on today's question.